Hello, this is Pastor Kennedy from Mount Zion Church of Ontario. On behalf of the Mount Zion family, we welcome you to be a part of our efforts to advance the kingdom of God. Underneath our efforts, we have seven core values. These values are the wind beneath our wings. These values are biblical statements that guide how we do ministry. They are scripture, Christ-centeredness, worship, prayer, the Great Commission, community, and faithful service. We offer a variety of services. As a historic church, we aim to be a pleasant delight in our city and beyond. We have outreach programs such as the boxing program, where we give young people an alternative to doing negative things in the community. We have fed the community for over 22 years, and God has always held back the rain so that we can feed our community. We also offer a year-round a year preschool to give foundation to our children. We have youth and children's program. We have a summer camp that runs for uh, 12 weeks during the summer. We have Angel Tree, which is a program to get in front of the incarceration problem problem we have. We are among the industrialized nations. We incarcerate more of our members, our community, our residents than any other nation in the world. And Angel Tree helps us to prevent incarceration. So we give gifts to the children of prisoners at Christmas time through Prison Fellowship Ministries. There are a number of other services. Our worship experience on Sundays and Saturday evenings are designed to help us connect with the living God, to get our souls filled, and to stimulate one another unto love and good works. Throughout the week, we have Bible studies so that we can grow in our faith and engage the world more effectively. Why don't you come and be a part of what we're doing here at Mount Zion? God bless you and God keep you.
Good morning, church. My name is Ramalaya Vasquez. I represent the youth. I'm going to be reading your scripture today. The scripture comes from Matthew 26, 36 through 46. Uh, you can read along with me if there's words on the screen. Okay. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, See here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved. To the point of death, remain here and keep watch with me. And he went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, So you men could not keep watch with me for an hour? Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again a second time and prayed, saying, My father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them again and went away and prayed a third time, saying the same thing once more. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hand of the sinners. Get up, let us be going. Behold, the one who betrays me is at hand. Please bow your head and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us all up today, Lord. Please forgive us for our sins, Lord, for we now know what we do. Lord, just please be with us through everyday life. Bless us, bless our community, and bless this church, Lord. Please just let us have an open mind, Lord, so we can learn more about you on Sundays, Wednesdays, and Mondays. Lord, please bless every family that's going through something, families that are grieving, going through financial struggle, or just don't have enough blessings in their life, Lord. Just please be with them. Lord, whatever fellowship we do today, please be with us, Lord. Let more people come out to worship you, Lord, and just be a part of uh, you, Lord, and our church, Lord, and Resurrection Sunday. Please guide us in the right direction, and please always keep us. As you pray with thanksgiving, amen. If you're here for the first time, can you remain standing up? Okay, I guess we all family. Amen, amen. Okay, I'm going to leave you guys in the, <laughs> with the phrase there. Thank you.
Amen. I'm glad that God made me who I am. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. On this Palm Sunday, we just want to recognize God for who he is, how good he's been. This is one of the most holy times of year yes. Amen. as we celebrate what Christ did, yes. not, not really just for us, but make it personal for me. For me. This is what Christ did exactly for me. And so I am grateful for my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. We're going to praise God. Amen. There we go. Come on, say, my hope is built. trust. I dare not trust the sweetest friend. But holy, but holy trust in Jesus' name. Come on, let's sing that again. Say, my hope is built. Come on, say, I dare not trust. I dare not trust the sweetest friend. Come on, but holy. But holy trust in Jesus' name. Say, Christ alone. Rest on his. I rest on his unchanging grace. Through every high and stormy Through gale. Through every high and stormy gale. Come on, say my anchor. My anchor holds within a bed. Say my anchor holds, yeah. Oh! 
Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom. In the same Savior's love Through the storm He is Lord Lord of all Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah But if you have your hope in Jesus, if you do not have hope, you have nothing to live for. The world is falling apart, and we have Christ as our cornerstone. He holds us together. Amen. Father God, thank you. If we have a living Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Thank you. We've stopped by this house of prayer to worship and bow down before you just because of who you are, because you gave us mercy today and you woke us up. We didn't deserve it. You gave us grace, your overwhelming love and favor, and we just wanted to stop and say thank you. And we want to stop and hear from you. Speak to us, Lord. Your servants are listening. Oh, God, take these precious moments in your word and encourage us, guide and direct us, use us and, and chip away at us and change us so we leave this place better than we came. We love you. Get the glory in all that we say and do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God has graced us with another picture-perfect day here in beautiful, sunny Southern California to worship and bow down before him. And what a great delight to worship, have worship with this praise team leading us in worship today. Amen. Well, we are grace to have guests with us. Thank you for joining us here at Mount Zion. Thank you. And to all of you online, thank you for joining us. I want to talk to you today about a timeless, a refreshing prayer. Father, not my will, but your will be done. Today's Palm Sunday drives us to talk about stuff like this. On Palm Sunday, we celebrate Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a young donkey and presenting himself as the legitimate king of Israel. 
Remember Herod the Great? He was the king when he was the illegitimate king when Jesus was born. And then his son, Herod Antipas, he was the other illegitimate king while Jesus did his ministry. Jesus, with an illegitimate king on the throne, rode into Jerusalem as the legitimate king over Israel. Jesus, the legitimate king of Israel, did his earthly ministry with an illegitimate king on the throne. While Herod Antipas was on the throne, Jesus, the rightful king, he preached and he taught God's word. He cast out demons, he healed the sick, he opened eyes and ears, he fed thousands, raised the dead, and set people free from religion, oppressive religion, and gave them a, an eternal, unconditional love relationship with the living God. Then the Sunday, that Sunday before us, there was that Sunday, that Palm Sunday, Jesus spent the whole week with this passion. That's why we call it Passion Week. So Palm Sunday begins what we call Passion Week. Jesus, he sat on this donkey on that Sunday. This young donkey and people threw palm branches on the ground and put their clothes on the ground. He rode into Jerusalem. And you know what happened? He offers himself as the king. You know what happened? The religious leaders. They led the nation to reject Jesus, a legitimate king. While he rode in, people were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. They Save us now. They act like they were with him, but they had a different agenda. Jesus, save us from these crazy, these cruel Romans. Beat them down. Be our savior. Be our military leader. Save us, Jesus. That wasn't his agenda. He didn't ride in on some big war horse. He rode in on a donkey, a beast of burden used for working and not for war. So he rides in as the humble king, but the people didn't care about that. They wanted something different. He rode in as Yahweh's suffering servant on a mission to save Israel and the world from sin. The religious leaders, they knew about Isaiah 53. They knew about the prophecies but they totally ignored them. They rejected Jesus. So, we have this thing called Passion Week. But Jesus did not allow the people's rejection to disrupt him from pursuing God's will for his life. At the end of the week, it was a long week, one week, Sunday through Friday, it was a very long week for Jesus. <laughs> so he rides into Jerusalem, he's rejected, and then he continues doing some teaching during the week and gets his disciples in the upper room and prepares them to continue the ministry that he started. And then he goes out into this garden after that, and he prays this refreshing and this timeless prayer. Throughout his ministry, Jesus was passionate about fulfilling God's will, God's desire for his life. It wasn't just during that week that he was concerned about it. It was throughout his entire ministry he was concerned about doing God's will. Our focus today is to follow the example of Jesus and concern ourselves with obeying God's will for our lives by praying this same refreshing and timeless prayer. Father, not my will, but your will be done. 
When you pray, Father, not my will, but your will be done, you are distinguishing yourself from the world of creative individualism where you can create yourself and do whatever you want to do. You're also distinguishing yourself from cultural Christianity. Cultural Christianity allows you to justify clear violations of God's design for the family. For instance, feeling superior or as an exception to others, stepping out on your spouse or lying to get ahead. Cultural Christianity allows you to devise schemes driving down property values by allowing rising crime, business failures, trash neighborhoods, forcing people to sell far below property values, then buying the property cheap, taking over the community, and pricing people out of the community to make a gentrified community. Cultural Christianity allows for that. In Micah chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, God condemns scheming and stealing people's land, people's homes, and their inheritance. When you take somebody's home, you steal the children's inheritance. Take their land, you steal the children's inheritance. Another example of cultural Christianity is being quick to harm or not even think about how we're harming others in violation of the golden rule. The golden rule says treat other people the what? The way you want to be treated. Praying not my will but your will be done is the way that Jesus prayed. It's in the DNA of biblical Christianity. It might be a struggle to pray this prayer, but real Christianity prays this prayer. Real Christians pray this prayer because we want to honor God by doing what's right according to the will of God. We want to be a blessing to our families and to others in the world around us. You can be confident in praying this selfless prayer because Jesus, our Savior and our Lord, he prayed this prayer. Father, not my will, but your will be done. This prayer flowed out of Jesus as normal and natural as breathing. It was in his DNA. Let's get this prayer inside of us today. Pray with me. Father, not my will, but your will be done. What is at stake here? What all did this prayer include for Jesus? Earlier I highlighted how Jesus, the rightful king of Israel, did his powerful world-changing ministry while Herod, the illegitimate king, was on the throne. We often start in Matthew 21 and work our way through Matthew 26 to describe what we call Passion Week. We trace the steps of Jesus all the way to Calvary's cross. You'll hear more about that this Friday at our Good Friday service. You don't want to miss it. Some phenomenal preachers will be here this Friday at 7 o'clock to give you a description of what happened on Calvary's cross. This prayer that Jesus prayed, it not only looked forward to what Jesus was going to suffer and what was going to happen after his suffering, but it included everything that Jesus did to make his death acceptable to God. His death had to be satisfying. It had to please the Almighty God, so that you could be right with God, and so that I could be right with God. Let's read what this prayer really meant, and how this prayer was not just about the seven days or those six days. It was more than that. Let's pray. Let's read it. John 17, verse 4. 
What does it say? Jesus prayed this prayer in John 17. He said, I glorify you on what? Earth, having accomplished the work which you've given to me to do. Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. By the time we get to Matthew 26, where Jesus entered into the Garden of Gethsemane, he had already spent three and a half years doing ministry. He already rode into Jerusalem and presented himself as the legitimate king. He already had proved himself to be the Messiah, Yahweh's suffering servant. Hence, this prayer is about everything Jesus did and what he would do. Everything was at stake here. Jesus was facing his responsibility to be the ultimate demonstration of God's love for the world. Can I help you right here? I know we have softened our sinful behavior in America today. We say things like, I have a situation here. I had a minor indiscretion. I kind of stepped out on my spouse. I told a little white lie. What I did wasn't that bad. I can fix it, just give it a little more time. Jesus was not dealing with minimizing our sin here. When you read what the prophet Isaiah reveals about Jesus and his death, Father, not my will, but your will be done, makes a whole lot more sense to us. Let's read what the prophet said, Isaiah 53 and 5. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us have turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. <clears throat> our transgressions and our iniquities are the things we know are wrong, but we do them anyway. Jesus, and Jesus, he suffered and died for our willful disobedience to God. Are you playing with God today and what he did to show his love for you? Are you taking your sin serious, or are you just kind of glossing over it? Palm Sunday, Good Friday, Resurrection Sunday are not just holidays to dress up, eat food, and, and have a great time and still dabble in sin. The prayer that Jesus prayed is an all-inclusive prayer. This prayer is about everything Jesus did while he was on earth to save you and to save me. Nothing about Jesus is disconnected from the will of God. Every step, every word, every miracle, every everything that Jesus did connected to the will of God for his life. What's your point, Pastor? You cannot pray this prayer Lord, not my will, but your will be done with only parts of your life. You can't do it. You cannot bring your obedient side and leave out your disobedient side. You cannot just bring your bright side and leave out the dark side, the double light. You are living. <clears throat> well, Pastor, I don't want to deal with my secret life, my double life, my dark side, and I don't need you meddling with my double life. Don't judge me, pastor. Leave my dark side alone. Let me keep lying. Leave my sexual immorality alone, pastor. My anger, my illegal forms of making money, it's not your business. My cheating, my gambling addiction, my drug and alcohol addiction, my abuse and suffering in silence, my pornography issue, my greed, my sneaking around. Pastor, do not bother 
with my dark side. All I'm trying to tell you today is Jesus modeled an all-inclusive prayer when he said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. This prayer involves all of your life. Do you want to be free? Who wants to be free? Who wants to be happy in Jesus? You can only have that when you pray this all-inclusive prayer. Father, pray with me. Father, not my will, but your will be done. Pastor, it hurts. I know. I'm hurting and I'm hurting others. When I think about what I've done, I feel guilt and shame. And pastor, I go to sleep with my guilt and shame. I keep doing stuff that's wrong before God. I just keep doing it. I don't think about it. How do I break free? What can I do today to get free and open my heart, open my entire life to God? I do really like the idea of God having complete control over my life, Pastor. I've made a mess of my life. Will this all-inclusive prayer really help me? This prayer works, but it does require times of solitude. Read it. Matthew chapter 26, verse 36. Let's read it. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. Dr. Luke, he he recorded this scene in this way. Let's read it. And he came out and proceeded, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples also followed him. Let's read what Mark said about it. After singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. After John recorded what Jesus did with them in the upper room, getting them ready to continue the work that he started, this is what John recorded. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the ravine of the Kidron, where there was a garden in which he entered with his disciples. What do you notice about these readings in the scriptures? This prayer requires times of solitude. Pray this prayer with me again. Pray it. Father, not my will, but your will be done. Why stop and get into a place of solitude for this prayer? Jesus modeled for us the importance of getting away from the hustle and bustle in life, to talk to the Lord about his will for our lives in a place of what? Solitude. Notice several instances in the gospel accounts where Jesus went to a place of solitude. He did it regularly. Luke chapter 5 verse 16 says that Jesus would often slip away into the wilderness and pray. Jesus got away in a boat and went to a desolate place by himself. Jesus was teaching a crowd one day, and after he finished teaching, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. One time, Jesus went on the mountain for an all-night prayer time with God. In our passage today, Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, a place he frequented for prayer. We learn an invaluable lesson from Jesus. Retreat, learn to retreat from the constant demands, the noise, and the daily routines, and get along with God for prayer and alignment with God's will for your life. Then you re-enter the world refreshed and re-energized and passionate for God's will for obeying God's will, even when it's tough. You're you're refreshed, you're 
You're passionate about obeying God's will for your life. You feel better, and you even do better. How many of you like feeling better? When you feel better, you'll do better. <laughs> Toe up on the floor, up so tired, just drag dog tired. You're going to mess up. You better learn to retreat. Get away. Talk to God. Align with God's will. So you can come out re-energized and refreshed and passionate about God's will. Solitude is where you eliminate all the voices, all the distractions in the world around you. It's when you turn off your internet feed and open your mind and your heart to the word of God, the will of God, and the way of God. Solitude is where you get to a place like the Garden of Gethsemane. I've been there. I prayed there. Ah, oh, something special about praying in that garden. I sat right up under an olive tree, and I just prayed. You're away from the crowds. You're away from the noise, and you sat there and pray. Pray like this. Pray with me, Father. Not my will, but your will be done. Henry Nouwen, a Dutch theologian and pastor, he said, solitude is the furnace of transformation. In other words, getting alone with God, away from a bunch of distractions, will transform your life. Well, Pastor, I know to leave my internet feed out of my solitude. I know that, and I know to get away from the distractions in life, and, but... But what do I bring to my garden of Gethsemane? Bring yourself. <laughs> bring your Bible. Bring worship music. Bring your hopes and dreams. Bring your disappointments and your pain. Bring your victories and defeats. Bring your secrets you've never told anyone. Bring the bright side of your life and bring the dark side of your life. You bring it all to your time alone with God. I remember I had to go into solitude at my sister's house in San Diego to seek God's face when I was in the wrong relationship with a very nice Christian woman. I was working full time as a prison fellowship director. I was a director of a homeless shelter as well, two full time jobs, and, and uh, that was for parolees. And, and I was a youth pastor and I was working on my master's degree. I wanted to be married. But I did not have peace. I had to keep convincing myself that I was in the right relationship. I needed to break away from the hustle and bustle. I needed to break away from my extreme, my extreme calendar. The schedule was crazy. I was only getting like three, four hours of sleep every day. It was crazy. I had to get away from the meetings and all the problems, all the travel, and just going through the motions. I was a walking and talking zombie. I was like a zombie. People were all around me, and I was engaged, but I was not connected. <laughs> I was on the verge of burnout and breakdown. I needed to get along with God and pray, Father, not my will but your will be done. God clearly spoke to my heart. Brian, you're in the wrong relationship with a very nice Christian woman. So I asked him to help me, help me get out, help me to, to obey your will. The next week she called me and said, I respect you too much. And she said, we are not to be married. We are not the right people for each other. And she broke up with me. I will always respect her for telling me the truth. <laughs> Identify your garden of Gethsemane. It's somewhere close to where you live. You don't have to take all day to get there. But you can get there when you need to. You might have multiple places. 
It needs to be a quiet place where you can talk to the Lord, where you can hear him speak to your heart. In that quiet place, bring all of you and everything about you. Make sure you pray when you get there, when you get there, when you get there. Make sure you pray this prayer. Pray with me again. Father, not my will, but your will be done. Pastor, in this passage, Jesus was not by himself. He had his disciples with him. Yes, he did. But notice how this prayer requires focus, even when you're among your inner circle. Let's read it. We've got a little reading to do here. Let's read. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. And he went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And he came to his disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, So you men could not keep watch with me for one hour? Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. He went away again a second time and prayed, saying, My father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy, and he left them again and went away and prayed a third time, saying the same thing once more. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. Behold, the one who betrays me is at hand. Jesus told the men in his inner circle he was feeling sorrow. He was feeling sad. His heart was troubled. To the point of death. Jesus had that 100% human side. You know, he's 100% God and 100% man. That 100% human side of Jesus knew the pain and suffering he was about to endure as a part of God's will for his life. Within hours, Jesus would take upon himself the sins of the world. And his father, who was holy, would turn his back. Because God's not going to deal with sin. He sent Jesus to, do what, to deal with sin. <laughs> he knew he would have a temporary separation from his father, and the thought of that was troubling. It made his heart sad. Jesus was filled with sorrow, and his soul was troubled. And he asked his disciples to keep watch with him while he prayed. Pastor, Jesus is equal to God. He didn't need his disciples to watch out for him. He already knew what was going to happen. He did. He did. He was teaching his disciples another invaluable lesson about being alert. Even when you're praying about God's will for your life, the devil will have zero respect for your most sacred moments. <laughs> so you got to pray and you got to be watchful. You got to pay attention. <laughs> Jesus went a short distance away and he prayed. His disciples fell asleep while he was praying. And Jesus came back to Peter. Y'all couldn't stay awake for an hour? What's up? What was going on there? Right before he entered the garden, Jesus said, now you guys are going to run away. The shepherd's going to be struck today, uh, later on, and you all are going to all scatter. And Peter said, you know what, Jesus? If I have to die with you, I'll die with you. And all the other disciples said, so, we will too, Jesus. We will too. And so Jesus is really trying to help them here. 
You guys mean well. But I want you to know this is a spiritual battle you're up against. This is not some lightweight incident that's going to happen here. You need to be prayerful. You need to be watchful because the spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. You're going to find out very shortly how you can make all these big promises in the flesh. But if you're not prayerful and watchful, your flesh will fail you. And that's exactly what happened. Jesus went back to his quiet space and he prayed <laughs> a second time. They were so sleepy. They were in the room with him. We don't know how long they were in the upper room with him. He was teaching them and preparing them to take over the ministry when he left. It was nighttime. People go to bed at night. They were sleepy. Jesus worked hard, and he worked them disciples hard. They weren't getting it, and they were falling asleep. He went back a third time, came back. They were still asleep. <laughs> you see what Jesus was doing? He, he, had to, he had to teach them. Even though they hadn't really connected, he still had to to teach them so that when he left and went back to heaven, they would understand the lessons that he taught them. Even when it comes down to praying God's will and your inner circle is not completely connected with you. You can face difficulty in life and the people in your inner circle, the people that are close to you, the people you pray with, the people who know a lot about you, the people who help you make decisions in life, they're not always connected. And this, was, this is clearly visible right here with Jesus and his disciples. They were with him for three and a half years. They knew about Jesus. They believed in Jesus. They were with Jesus. They sacrificed a lot. They gave up family time to walk with Jesus. They came under threats just like Jesus. But right here, his inner circle is a little disconnected from him. And this kind of prayer, Father, not my will, but your will be done, it requires you to be focused even among your inner circle. You got to stay focused in that quiet time. Here we are in this sanctuary this morning. And Everybody doesn't know what you're going through. Dr. Orge is here, and he's now the, the president of our executive committee for the Southern Baptist Convention. This is a huge responsibility. He doesn't even know all that's coming his way. Something's going on in your life. And we're in this sacred space where we can talk to the Lord and we can hear from God. We're in the sanctuary. We're in God's house. Everyone may not be totally connected with you, but you could still pray this prayer. You got to stay focused wherever you are. And no matter what anybody knows or do not know about you, you need to focus when you pray this prayer, Preston. Father, not my will, but your will be done. Praying, Father, not my will, but your will be done, drives your obedience to God. How many of you want to obey God? You just want to obey God. You, you've obeyed a lot of people and things in this life, and, and you've had consequences. How many of you want to obey God who will never lead you wrong, who will always have your back? You want to obey God. You pray this prayer, you'll obey God. It will help you live out God's plan to use you, to help your family. How many of you want to help your family? And you want to help other people around you. This prayer positions you to receive reward from God. 
How many of you want your reward from God? People are not going to always give you what you deserve, or at least what you think you deserve, but God has your back. He will reward you. He will never forget you. He has you. This prayer gets you ready for all of that. So here's your challenge this week. In a world determined to do life without God or partially with God, you dare to do life completely with God. How do I do that, Pastor? Pray this prayer. Pray it with me. Father, not my will, but your will be done. That's your challenge this week. Pray it every day. Pray it throughout the day. Pray it as often as you need to pray it. Let's stand together and let's pray. Lord, with so many ways to compromise obeying you and doing the right thing, help me consistently pray, Father, not my will, but your will be done. Lord, help me to pray this prayer for all areas of my life. Lord, give me times of solitude so you have my undivided attention and can speak to my heart. Lord, help me to focus even when I am on a different page with my trusted friends. Lord, help me follow the example of Jesus, my Savior and Lord, in praying, not my will, but your will be done. I live to love and serve you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Is this your prayer? Is this your prayer? <laughs> so be it. You may be here and it's like, wow, Pastor, I'm not even connected to God like that. Today's a good day to get connected to God just like that. You may be online and it's like, man, I didn't know that my life could be so focused and so meaningful. It can be, but you have to let God have his way in your life. You can't chart your own course. God has a plan and purpose for you. Ah, he loves you. Before you were born, before you were formed in your mother's womb, God had all the days numbered for your life. And God had already planned out your life. He wants to use you for his glory. He loves you so much. Don't you want to be in a space where... You feel God's presence and power on your life all the time. <clears throat> Where you feel his favor. You just know he's going to work it out for you. I, I keep telling you, I was in a couple of hospitals this week. And them parking lots in these hospitals are full. God always gives me a park. I just expect him. I expect his favor in my life. I expect to get into the hospital no matter what time I arrive. I expect to get there before the surgery. Even if they say the surgery's already in process, they're in the back, I expect God to open up the door so I can get in there and pray with them before they wheel them in to the surgery room. I expect him to do that. And he does it all the time. You gotta live with God's favor. You have to expect it. But the only way that's going to happen for you is you got to pray this prayer, Father, not my will, but your will be done. And then you can be perfectly aligned. You'll be right where he wants you to be. And he'll work on your behalf like you have never, ever imagined. He will blow your mind with his power, his provision, and his presence in your life. He is something else. And if you want that for your life, you've never prayed and asked God to come into your life. Jesus is just, you know, out there somewhere for you. I just want to lead you in this prayer where you could try him for yourself. Now, if it doesn't work out, you've lost nothing. But I promise you he'll stick closer to you than a brother. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. You taste and see that the Lord is good. You got to try him for yourself, man.
And if you're here and you want to try him for yourself, you've never tried Jesus. You've tried everything. And it's just left you toe up from the floor, up, disappointed and discouraged, depressed, messed up. You can pray this prayer with me right now. Dear Jesus, I know I'm messed up. I have sin in my life, and I need you, and I want you. Jesus, I believe you died for my sins. I believe you were buried. I believe you rose again from the dead. Come into my life and save me. Make me the person you want me to be. Amen. If you prayed this prayer for the first time, welcome to the family. Yeah. Amen. But look, look, most of y'all up in here are Christians. And some of y'all are totally frustrated with your lives right now. And you want your life aligned with the will of God. You are sick of this cultural Christianity because it's leading to nothing. Just a bunch of mess. You're a political powder cake. You're into politics and you're putting your faith in a president and all this stuff. And, and you believe the world revolves around a president. That's not what Jesus believed. He was the true king, and he did his ministry with an illegitimate king in office. He saved the world with an illegitimate king on the throne. God didn't call us to put our faith in a president. He called us to make disciples. And you've been off track. You've been dipping and dodging and slipping and sliding. And you want to get on track and be in God's will. You want to obey God's will for your life. I just want to pray with you. Just raise your hand if that's you. Is that you? You just want to align your, your life with the will of God? You better get that car aligned, you know, or you're going to wear them front tires out. You want to align your life with God's will or you're going to mess up. You're going to be off road. You're going to go out of control. You're going to crash. Lord, in the name of Jesus, forgive us for doing life without you, being disobedient, just walking in iniquity, just as wrong as two left shoes, playing it down like it's no big deal. Downplaying the suffering and the death that you died for our sins. Please forgive us. Clean us up right now. Oh God, and realign us. We want to be right in your will right now, right now. In the name of Jesus, keep us with your keeping power. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you are out here and you're saying, well, Pastor, I want to be a part of this church. There's a blue card in the seat in front of you. You can fill that card out. We would love to have you as a member of this church. If you prayed this prayer for the first time, fill that card out. You put on there, Pastor, I prayed the prayer. I'm going to call you. I will personally call you because I want to walk with you. Amen. We want to get you involved with this church family so you can grow and thrive as a Christian. Amen. 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 And if you pray this prayer, you're new here. Here's the next step. Meet me right here in front, right here in front of the sanctuary. Meet me right here. All right. And we can get started with your walk with Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's pray uh, about how we are to worship God in our giving. Let's pray about it. Amen. How do you want to give to God? According to his will. <laughs> Amen. Father, speak to us. Show us what you would have us to give today, we want to obey your will. We want to be generous and be your people and walk out of here knowing that you'll make a way out of no way and you bless your people for building your kingdom. So guide us right now. Take these gifts and bless them like you did the bread and the fish and bless each giver according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen.
family, this is Amber, and here are your weekly announcements. We are excited to invite you to a very special event happening on April 20th at 10 a.m. in the Mount Zion Cafe. In partnership with the National Alliance on Mental Health Illness, NAMI, the Mental Health Ministry, alongside the Hub Ministry, will be hosting an event dedicated to fostering understanding, compassion, and support for mental health within our church and our community. Mental health is a journey that touches many of us in one way or another. Whether you're navigating your own path or supporting someone who is, this event is an opportunity to gather, learn, and grow together. Get ready for an empowering experience experience at our men's ministry conference, Basic Life Support. Join us on Saturday, April 27th, as we gather to equip ourselves with essential faith-driven skills that dives into believing, living, and studying the word. Secure your spot now by scanning the QR code provided on the screen, or visit the church's website at mountzionontario.com to complete your registration online. Join us on June 9th at 2 p.m. for a momentous occasion as we celebrate the achievements and milestones of our students at the annual graduation ceremony. This year, we draw inspiration from the theme, God is always working for your good, reflecting the profound message of Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Whether you or your loved ones are graduating from high school, college, or a trade program, or promoting from preschool, elementary, or junior high, Mount Zion is excited to honor your hard work and dedication. This is a wonderful opportunity to commemorate the significant step in your education journey surrounded by friends, family, and the Mount Zion community. Additionally, we are thrilled to offer a scholarship opportunity for high school graduates. For more details and to register for the ceremony, please refer to the registration form provided. Hello, this is Pastor Kennedy and my friend Timothy the Turtle. You know, there's an ongoing mystery at Mount Zion with the children of Mount Zion, whether or not Timothy can speak. Timothy speaks to me when I'm here at the beautiful Ontario Town Square. I don't know what he does when the children come. It just depends on how nice they are to Timothy. But anyway, we're preparing for the uh, annual Easter celebration here at the beautiful Ontario Town Square. We will have two services, one at 7 a.m. and one at 10 a.m. We look forward to celebrating with you. This is a multi-generational, multi-ethnic event. So invite your family, your friends, your neighbors. We'll give you flyers to pass out. And remember this, we are meeting at the Ontario, the beautiful Ontario Town Square, located at 224 North Euclid Avenue. We have plenty of free parking here with our new parking structure. And for those who want a sunrise experience, we will meet at seven o'clock a.m. At 10 o'clock, we will have a mid-morning worship experience. In between our services, we will have Color Easter for our children, and that starts at nine o'clock. Good Friday and Easter, these are the highest days in the church. Good Friday is when Jesus died on the cross for our sins, but he rose again on Sunday morning. And that's what this celebration is all about. I look forward to worshiping with you. God bless. Please stay in touch with us throughout the week by scanning our QR code or following us online. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, have a blessed week, family. So Destiny, you know, I went over to the town square and we have this parking structure. So if you drive an e-car, you can plug in at the parking structure, really? right? So you can Ooh. drive it empty and then, uh, or low on battery and get charged up right there, right? I didn't know that. It's yeah. amazing to know. Yeah. If anybody wants to give me an e-car, you can. <laughs> <laughs> um, so welcome to another episode of Postscripts. I did have a couple of questions that I wanted to ask you. But where's Layla? Well, if you guys didn't know, it was her birthday yesterday. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so she's um, celebrating her birthday. So if you see Leela, make sure to give her a happy birthday. Yeah, we're her. looking for her. Anyway, Destiny, you are a great choice. Thank you. I hope well, so. <laughs> well, what are these questions you have? Uh, so first, I know that you kept mentioning not my will, but your will be done. And my question was, what happens when you're at a point where you're either asking God, like, I need this in my life, or I'm looking for directions, and you're just saying, not my will, but your will be done. Whatever you need me to do, God, even if I don't want to do it, like, I'm ready. Like, I want to know the next steps. But you're not getting an answer, or he's telling you to be patient. What do we do during those moments? 
Well, you be patient. <laughs> <laughs> now, <clears throat> actually, you do what you know you're supposed to do. There's enough in the Bible to guide you today. So you know you're supposed to be kind to people. You know you're supposed to share your faith with people. You know if you have a job, you're supposed to be a good steward on that job. You know uh, among family, you're supposed to do certain things in the community. So you have God's will all around you. You know what to do. But there's these extra things that God is moving on your heart to do, such as I knew God wanted me to do more. I was a great, I was loving Sunday school. I was teaching junior boys. Mm -hmm. You know, them little rascals told me, your class is boring. Oh, wow. That's what they told me. <laughs> and so I had to learn to communicate with junior boys. And then I really started enjoying it, right? But I knew God wanted more for me. Mm -hmm. And so while I was waiting on God to make that clear to me, I was faithful with those junior boys. So you be faithful in the things that God has you doing right now, and he will clearly guide you where he wants you to be. So if you're in God's will today and tomorrow, and you practice being in God's will every day, where do you think you'll be in five years? Amazing places in God's will. <laughs> Amazing places right in God's will. So that's how you answer that. That's, that's the answer to that. One. Thank you. It's a good question. Yes, it's, a, it's hard to stay faithful sometimes. You just got to keep praying, trust God. That's right. Uh, my second question is, you spoke about willful disobedience and taking sin seriously. How can we help other people understand the importance of sins? And how do we let them know that what we do as Christians is just as important as what we don't do? Great question. Um, we take people to Calvary's cross. When you help people understand the suffering that Jesus endured, it gives people a sense of how messed up we really are. Jesus had to go through all of that just to pay for my sin. And so it makes me appreciate him more. And it makes me more mindful of my sin. And so when you find Christians who just keep living in sin and they gloss over it and play like it's not a big deal, and I'm not bothering anybody, I'm not hurting anybody, this is what we do, everybody else is doing it, then you gotta help them go to Calvary's cross. You gotta talk to them, but, but what about Jesus? What about what he did for us? I want to talk to you about his suffering and how much he went through so that you don't have to live in this, so that God will forgive you for this and you can get the victory over this. It's all around the cross and then the resurrection power that he gives to us. You don't have to live that way. Now, some people just want to. Yeah. Now, that's the other side of it. They're not struggling. They want to live in sin. And they're just shaking their fist in God's face. Mm -hmm. That's why God calls it iniquity. That's why it's called iniquity. It's, you know you're wrong. And you're saying to God, God, I know it's wrong, but I'm going to do it anyway. Give me if you want to. A man told me that. He, was, he, was, he kicked his wife to the curb. I said, boy, you lying on your wife. I told him straight up, you lying on your wife. And he said, well, I'll just take my chances with God. I said, wow. you sure will. And it's a big chance you're taking with God. Because he sits high and he looks low. And he sees the evil and the good. And he's going to spank your behind. And God did just that. Wow. And he's going to get us when we're disobedient like that. Um, kind of going back on that, or your answer, let's, like if we turn it back on us, in those situations where we're struggling with a sin, especially a sin that's seen as something small, yeah. um, or like let's say music, it's just music, you know, it's not that important, it's not that big of a deal, something's so normalized and we're trying to step away from it, like I'm trying to stop listening to second or music that is not of God. <laughs> um, and our friends, our family, the people that are supposed to be supporting us and praying with us aren't doing that. What do we right. do? Because, you know, we don't want to be alone. Even in the Bible, the scripture, it says right. two are stronger than one. So I struggle with that. that. I got my first little car. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> and Daddy wouldn't buy me the V6. He wouldn't help me with it. He got me one of the little slow four cylinders. I was so mad. But I was thankful. All right. And so I had a little <laughs> radio in it. Had a little radio in it. And girl, you know, I was trying to listen to that other music, but it was messing my brain up. 
I'm trying to live for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then I want to, you know, kind of play my little music and roll my window down, let people know, you know, I might have a <laughs> four cylinder, but I am bumping, you know? <clears throat> oh, that was a struggle, 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 struggle. And so, um, and the Christian music we had then, it was so boring. It's like, no, 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 no. There ain't no way I'm playing these hymns up in this car, no. And so we didn't have Kirk Franklin yet, you know? And, and so I just started listening to the news. Well. <laughs> that's what I did. I just started listening to the news. And that's what helped me. Well, I'm sure you were very self-aware. <laughs> and so it's a struggle, it's a real struggle. But today what Christians have, especially younger Christians, you have really cool gospel music. That's true. And so it will edify you and build you up. I was next to this guy, I pulled up slowly. He was bumping some good Christian music. And I just had to give him a thumbs up, you know? Yeah, so that's how you could do it today. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you guys for joining us for another episode of Postscripts. If you do have any questions, you can comment below or text us at 909-906-0272. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bless you. Thank Tessie. you. <laughs> you did great. <laughs> yeah. All right, come on children, let's get to the altar and all of our youth and our college students. Come on, come on, come on. All right. Well, what is that? Is that a compact? Yeah. What you doing with a compact? From London, uh, yeah. She just came from London, that's cool. All right, so listen, we're gonna, uh, any of the evangelism team members here, we're gonna have you come up as well because our evangelism team, they're joining our children and youth and they're going into the community to pass out door hangers. So come on Dunbar, bring the team on up. We wanna pray for you, amen? It's an exciting moment. And they're going into a, uh, um, a very uh, highly populated area here in Ontario today and just putting out the door hangers, inviting people out for Good Friday and Easter, amen? Amen, let's stand together. And if you want to join them, just come on up. Dunbar is our leader. You just join them and, and, and go out with them. We want you to get involved. We want you to do outreach, amen? And this is a very practical way to do evangelism. Just give somebody a door hanger. It's one way you could do it. Father, thank you. Thank you for these children, the finest in the nation. These young people, the finest in the nation. And God, our desire is to be good stewards over their lives. So give us your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as we connect with them and walk with them along the way. And God, give them the strength they need. So they can say yes, say no when it's time to say yes or no. Help them to really hold on to Jesus in a world that's telling them Jesus is not real. Help them, oh God, to work with their parents and communicate well with their parents and guardians, oh God. Protect their relationships with one another and other young people who are on the same page with them. God, protect them from the evil one who wants to hurt them and lead them astray. Disrupt those teachers who have agendas in their curriculum to question their gender identity just disrupt all of that. Give our children wisdom so they can hear and know and discern what's right and what's wrong. Oh God, remember this congregation and all the needs represented here today. Touch, heal, deliver, and raise up. Lord, remember this evangelism effort today. These children are going out to tell people about you. These youth are joining them and others in the congregation. Let your hand of favor be upon them. Give them an opportunity to invite someone to Jesus. Oh God, give them good fruit today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let the church say, Amen.